Well, joining me now is the best-selling author of The Madness of Crowds, The War on the West and The Strange Death of Europe, Douglas Murray. Douglas, pleasure to have you on the show tonight, mate. Great to be back with you. Now, obviously, one of the biggest stories, not only in the UK, but the world this week, uh, is the BBC presenter at the, the centre of this explicit photo scandal, who's now been revealed as Hugh Edwards, who's one of the most senior news readers at the BBC. But you've, you've now got the media elite coming out and saying that the publication of this story by The Sun was uh, unethical, it's voyeurism, it's getting into someone's personal life when they shouldn't be, because, of course, the Met Police have now said there was no criminality involved in the allegations that he was paying exorbitant sums of money for photos from someone who was alleged to be 17 at the time. But surely it's about the public's right to know. I mean, if we start telling newspapers that you can't report on anything relating to someone's personal life, I mean, newspapers would cease to exist. Well, uh, that's absolutely true. I mean, the Sun has a perfect right to report on this. And, of course, uh, uh, the fact that it's the BBC is what makes the mm. story so, so newsworthy. The, the BBC is, you know, meant to be the, the, the jewel in the crown of broadcasting and entertainment, indeed, in Britain. It's, a, it's unlike other uh, television networks in that it's, it's, it's paid for by a tax which is raised from the general population. Mm. Uh, so that makes it very different from other uh, media enterprises. You know, if you don't want to buy a newspaper, you don't have to. But if you want to have a television in the UK, you've got to pay the licence fee for the, <laughs> for the BBC. So there is a sort of feeling that, you know, it's a national institution and in a way, you know, some kind of better um, uh, standards are expected of them. I'm actually very wary of media on me media fire. Uh, and I said this during another recent British uh, presenter scandal, the Philip Schofield affair recently. Uh, I said then as well, uh, um, you know, we're very confused in our societies at the mm. moment because the public seem to expect um, public figures uh, to behave in a way that the public doesn't behave in. Uh, now, you might well say, and I would, that legislators, uh, people in the, in, uh, in the legislative parts of government, should be held to a, uh, uh, you know, a sort of a higher standard of personal ethic and responsibility. Journalists? I'm not so sure. My own view has always been that if you start that, you end up with a Mexican gunfight and no one's alive. But joking aside, this is a scandal uh, because it's the BBC that appears as so often to have been involved in a kind of cover-up. Mm. The complaint was brought some months ago. Uh, the BBC did not look into it seriously, and so it was left to the Sun to expose the story. And of course, the Sun is now coming in for all of this um, attack. But I would just, I would throw one idea out there, which is. You know, uh, uh, all these people who are saying be kind now about Hugh Edwards and uh, the BBC and so on, I wonder if they'd have the same attitude if this had been a revelation about, say, Nigel Farage, hmm. who presents yes. the television programme, or, or anyone else uh, uh, who doesn't have the sort of the, 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 the metropolitan left patina that, that, that we all know and can identify. I wonder if these same people would be saying, hold back. I, I, mm. I do believe that we should be careful about this sort of thing. But I think some people are just defending their side, and I don't think it's a very pretty sight. Well, it should be noted as well that The Sun didn't name Hugh Edwards. They didn't name oh. the, the sex of the person that he was supposedly communicating with. They went to great lengths to protect uh, both ends of that story. So you, you can hardly accuse them of, you know, uh, persecuting one person. They didn't do that at all. Right. But the reason it's become well, a political football is, is because it's the BBC. And, it, and it's this uh, desire of the left in the UK in particular. So, well, any, any attack attack here is somehow uh, an effort to bring down the BBC. Well, it's not. I mean, as you say, the BBC had these complaints ages ago. They'd known about it for months. They didn't say anything to anyone about it. What did they expect? You, you know, I, I also think that there's this sort of weird standard people have at the moment, which is, again, uh, uh, try it another way around. All of the I've mentioned many times uh, with you and, and Rita and other colleagues, you know, the Be Kind Brigade are always be kind in very specific circumstances. You know, if you tread on any of their pet issues or any of their pet heroes, 
they are not kind to you at all. And the people who are saying be kind about Hugh Edwards now are very often the people who rampage across social media as well as the media, bullying everyone. I mean, one of the people who's led to Hugh Edwards' defence uh, 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 this week has been Alistair Campbell, uh, the former spin doctor for Tony Blair, who, who, who routinely rampages around the uh, television studios, uh, bullying people, particularly women, it has to be said, um, on air. And now he's all, oh, we've got to be kind and protect Hugh Edwards' feelings. I don't trust these people who say this because I know and I see them uh, trampling all over uh, the feelings of people when they happen to disagree with them politically. So there's an awful lot of double standards at play standards, they'd have no standards at all. Um, moving on to the uh, civil service in the UK, they've put out some draft policies relating to gender and sex. There's about 500,000 people work in the civil service in the UK. Uh, and they are suggesting in these new policies that uh, perhaps only people who have uh, a genuine certificate from a doctor saying that they are transgender should be able to go into single-sex toilets. And it also suggests that people should be respectful of all views when it comes to gender identity, including people who might think that uh, transgenderism isn't all it's cracked up to be. Uh, the lefty website Vice has hit out and said, oh, this is transphobic. I think most people would say it's common sense. Yes, it, transphobic is one of those words you have to be really careful with, like gender-affirming care or gender-affirming surgery or trans kids. A lot of language is being smuggled past us at the moment that means mm. really something else. Um, in, in the case of this uh, appalling, disreputable uh, website, Vice, it's a, a real muckraker of, 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 a, of an organization. It's, it started off as quite fun many years ago and it's become completely woke and unreadable. The correspondent who wrote this used to actually be the so-called LGBTQIA plus correspondent for the BBC. <laughs> until the BBC realized that actually this wasn't having a correspondent writing about gay issues. It was actually having a sort of ambassador uh, within the organization. Uh, so he's now retreated to Vice, and he can, he continues his campaign, and that's what it is. It's a campaign. This isn't journalism. And on this occasion, his pro-trans uh, campaign and pro-transing of kids and everyone else campaign has ended up with this desperate attack to pretend that what you quite rightly described as common sense is in actual fact transphobic. And, uh, of course, it's no such thing. Um, it, 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 this document says quite rightly that there will be some people who have gender-critical views. That's what mm. we all used to feel quite recently, again, common sense. But uh, this piece so it says, it says how, how can a trans person in the civil service possibly coexist with somebody who, uh, quote, denies my identity? Well, they don't. They just have a different opinion from you, love. And, you know, that's what things in this world, isn't it? You've got to rub along with people of different opinions. But as I say, once again, it's like the be kind people. All those people who say, we just want tolerance. Oh, no. No, so many of them don't. So many of them don't want tolerance. They just want wild acceptance of themselves, mm. deep intolerance of anyone who disagrees with them. Well, if you thought uh, transphobic was a bit of a warping of the language, we've got to talk about Kamala Harris, who's, who's got to be one of the, the great warpers of the English language. I mean, if, if word salad was like an actual food you could sell, she could open up a, a, a chain to rival McDonald's, to be perfectly frank. And she's come out with some great clangers this week. She's been talking about transportation. She's, she's apparently got to explain what transportation is to a round table of people who've come to talk about transportation. And then, of course, she She's the AI czar in the US, and she made an attempt to explain what AI is. Take a look at a couple of these clips. And I again want to thank the Secretary for your work. Uh, this issue of transportation is fundamentally about just making sure that people have the ability to get where they need to go. <laughs> it's that basic. And I think the first part of this issue that should be articulated is AI is kind of a fancy thing. It's, first of all, it's two letters. It means artificial intelligence. But ultimately what it is, is it's about machine learning. And so the machine is taught. And part of the issue here is what information is going into the machine. 
I mean, seriously, Douglas, has this woman actually been lobotomised? Every time she opens her mouth, something comes out that, you know, a, a year three student could make more sense of. You know, um, when she said just that, you know, we want, we need to know what information is going into the machine. I think that about Kamala Harris. <laughs> what just... information is going in there? And, oh. you know, for her, she says it's a bit complicated. It's two letters, AI. Get, that doesn't sound very complicated. <laughs> Uh, no more complicated than getting from A to B, but she decided to explain what that was as well for the transportation guys. Kamala Harris is the gift that keeps on giving. There is nothing so banal that she cannot say it with a great grin, expecting roars of approval from an audience. Uh, but, you know, recent studies have shown one of the reasons why she's so fantastically unpopular is that she speaks down to people. Mm. She speaks the general public and they don't like that you know the general public uh, you know just don't want to have this sort of wildly patronizing tone uh, used at them and that's what Kamala Harris does all the time and every day she does it every day there's a new way of sort of sort of patronizing the public and these weird things the laughter the bizarre um drunken sounding laughter after <laughs> saying something that doesn't merit any laughter and much of it, frankly, starts to merit nothing but a sigh of disbelief. Well, uh, I think it was about a month ago when Biden was um, uh, giving an address about gun control and he finished by saying, God save the Queen, man. I, I think at this point we can say God save the United States because, of course, we are just one uh, coronary away from uh, Kamala Harris running the show. It's, it's, it's quite scary. Um, now, just sticking in the US for a moment, New York University hosted an anti-racism workshop targeted towards white public school parents, which apparently aimed to quash anti-racist attitudes while reflecting on the impact of internalised white superiority. I mean, a bit like Kamala Harris. Can you help me make any sense of that, Douglas? Yeah, this is the institutionalization of an idea which itself uh, belongs in a mental institution. This is the <laughs> so-called anti-racist uh, uh, um, ideology. It's, again, we've had a lot about language today, but it, it, again, anti-racist sounds great. We're all anti-racist. We all want to be anti-racist. Nobody wants to be a racist. But this, this so-called anti-racism that has been cooked up in America in recent years is actually just racism. And this N NYU case shows it. It's only white people who have to be indoctrinated into this so-called anti-racism. Why? Is it only white people who are capable of racism? Are black people not capable of racism? It's amazing. There are so many parts of Africa and other parts around the world, never mind in America. <laughs> You can find very racist attitudes among black people, and many of them don't feel much shame about that either. Uh, plenty of Hispanics and other minorities have in America have their own racist views, but no, the anti-racism is a one-way street on this, the so-called anti-racism. It's just an attempt to tell the whites, you're bad, you're racist, you need to be indoctrinated out mm. of it. All it is attempt to mass indoctrinate the majority of the public. I think it's utterly sick and reprehensible, and it has no place in any institution, as I say, other than a mental institution. Douglas Murray, thank you so much for joining me tonight. Pleasure as always.